Hey guys, this is Agent Mindstorm, and today we're going to continue the Bedrock Edition resource pack making tutorial series thing. That's a lot of words, but you know what I mean. If you don't have the basic pack created yet, with the manifest and the icon and the file path and stuff, go watch the first video, it's in a playlist that is linked in the description of this one. If you already have the basic pack created, like you, you know, you followed the video like you're supposed to, we're going to learn how to edit the textures today. So, uh, let's get started. Once again, this is a Windows tutorial. If you're on Mac or Linux, I heard the program G-I-M-P, Jimp, Gimp, I don't know how you pronounce it. It's good, and it's free, but I haven't used it, and I haven't made a tutorial on it, like I have for this video. So, uh, I can't help you if you're on Mac or Linux. The first thing we're going to do is install paint.net, which is completely free. It's a simple editor similar to Microsoft Paint, but with lots of added features like anti-aliasing toggles, transparency, and most importantly, layers. If you can't install programs on your computer, you can use Paint.net. It works pretty well for editing pixels, but it miss it's like missing all the bells and whistles that come with Paint.net, and uh, it's just not as good. Also, you don't get a tutorial on it. Go to the link in the description of this video and press the blue text under the free download now on the page to download the file. Save it, then find it in your downloads folder. Extract the file and run the .exe file. Choose yes, and you'll get into this setup menu here. Now this, we're going to set up the program before installing it, so we're going to choose custom, then agree to this terms of service thing, and make sure all these options here are how you want them. You might not want a desktop shortcut, who knows, maybe you have like 40 like my old computer did. Maybe you don't want another one, so just uncheck that if you want, you know, basically make sure they're what you like. Then leave this file path screen here how it is. Don't touch it. It's, it's good how it is, unless you know what you're doing, in which case, go on ahead. Finally, press next one last time and paint.net will install on your computer. Press finish when this bar is done and you'll be in paint.net. Here's a screen that looks intimidating, but it's actually quite easy once you get used to it. Let's break it down. In the top right corner, you can toggle all these small little menus. I don't recommend that you mess with them, but if you accidentally close the color wheel, for example, just press the button up here in the corner to get it back. In the bottom right corner, you have the layers menu. All these small menus can be dragged around the screen, by the way, in case you want to move them. Now the layers menu has a few useful buttons. On the bottom of the menu, there's the New button, which adds an empty layer, then there's the Delete button, which removes the layer, and then there's the Duplicate button, which copies a layer. The next few buttons are more complicated, but also more useful. There's Merge Layer Down, which will take a layer and the layer under it and turn them into one layer, which removes any pixels that were underneath the top layer. Then there's the Move Layer Up and Down buttons, that control which layer is rendered first, so if you have pixels on both layers in the same place, if it's on top, you'll see that pixel over the one on the bottom. Finally, there's the Properties button, which lets you rename layers and change their opacities, which we're going to use in a later video, but we don't have to worry about it today. On the top half of the Layers menu, there's the Visual Layers stack. The checkbox decides whether or not to render a layer, and you can drag the individual layers up and down, which basically does the same thing as the button at the bottom. In the bottom left corner of the screen, we have the Color Wheel. Press the More button right here to see the RGB combo, the hex code, and the saturation hue brightness combo of the color you have. You can also choose the opacity, which is the transparency, of the color here. The s color you select will be what you draw with. When you draw with the left click, you'll use the primary color, and when you draw with the right click, you'll use the secondary color. You can flip the colors from primary to secondary and vice versa with this button here, or use this drop down menu at the top to change them individually. There's more here than just those functions, but we don't really need any of them, so we're just going to ignore them. In the top left corner, we have the toolbar. The tools you're going to use are pencil, whose shortcut is P. Who could have guessed that? I mean, it's just, that's way out there. And then the eyedropper, whose shortcut is K. The eyedropper is, it selects whatever color you click on it, in case you don't know. It is a super useful function, especially in resource packs, because it means you don't have to retry to get the color hard way. You just click the eyedropper and click whatever color you want, and boom, you've got that color selected. Other functions are in here, like select and fill, but we don't need them for the basic stuff, so we're just going to ignore them for now, too. I will do a video later with more advanced functions in paint.net, and we will definitely cover those. Right now, we're going to click on the eyedropper, or press K, 
and change this do not switch tool button at the top of the screen to switch to previous tool. It'll speed things up a lot because you don't have to click back to the pencil every single time you select a new color. Finally, we have the top of the screen, which has different image controls and save controls. I'm going to assume you know how to save files, because if you've gotten this far without knowing how to save things, I am worried for you. And we're not going to cover that. To make new files, though, click the New button and change the resolution to whatever size your texture is going to be. Normal Minecraft textures are 16 by 16 pixels, so that's what I'm going to choose. Now that you have a new canvas, hold the control key and use the scroll wheel to zoom in on that tiny little square. Press this grid button at the top of the screen for a visual indicating grid of each pixel, then hold control A and delete the whole canvas. We're not going to use that white texture. Now you have a nice empty space to draw your custom texture. Choose a color on the color wheel and make sure the opacity is set to 255. Choose the pencil and start drawing your texture. You can change the colors however you want, you can draw whatever shape you want, but woohoo! You are making a resource pack. You're drawing a texture. Now I can't tell you how to draw well, because I'm not really an expert on it myself, but I can tell you how to draw, and now you know. Once your beautiful custom texture has been created, open your folder from the previous video with Minecraft's default files in it. Go to textures, then find whatever texture you want to replace. So for example, if you drew a replacement for oak planks, which is what I'm going to do, we're going to search for oak planks. Now, as you can see, it didn't pop up. And this is because the naming scheme that Bedrock Edition uses is outdated and weird. So what you're going to do when you search for textures is instead of searching for the whole texture, just search for one word in it, search oak, or search planks, and then find the right one. So as you can see, the actual name is planks oak. And now if you don't get that naming right, the texture won't be registered when you put it in your pack, so you have to make sure that you get the name right. After you figure out what the name of your texture is supposed to be, head back to paint.net and click the save button. Go to your resource pack folder, which should be pinned to quick access still, and create subfolders that match the default resource path. Since we chose oak planks, we're going to go textures, we're going to create a folder called textures, control N, and then name it textures, then we're going to go into textures and create another folder called blocks, and then open that one too. Now, we're going to name the file planks underscore oak, and then we're going to make sure that the extension is .png. Make sure that the type PNG is also selected in this little drop-down menu, because if you put a different extension than what it actually is, that'll just confuse everything and it won't work at all. So now save the texture in the correct folder with the correct name and the correct file type. Then we're going to close everything and open up Minecraft to see if it worked. Apply your resource pack in the global resources screen and load up a world. Since I replaced oak planks, I'm going to get an oak plank block to check. As you can see, the texture is now the custom one that I created in this video and saved in this video. Isn't that crazy? This is the process that you're going to use for every single texture you create. Draw it, find what to name it, put it in the correct folder in your resource pack, and test it in-game. Now you don't have to test it after every single individual texture once you get it down. You can do a group and then make sure they all worked. But it is, it is very smart to try to check it every once in a while and make sure you're naming things right, make sure they're all working, and make sure your pack isn't broken. And that is where we're going to wrap up this video. Now you have the default files, and you know how to make textures, and you have a program to make textures, you know all the basics of creating a resource pack. More videos will come out later that explain more advanced things, such as more paint.net features like I already mentioned, and then also TGA files, JSON files, other than the manifest, animations, but for now, I do want to tell you all, thanks for watching, and I will see you later.